Today, Father Joseph Johnson, in his great kindness, characteristically, asked Mark Eldridge to tape my reading of a poem that I've been kind of working at on and off over quite a few years. Uh, it's fairly long. There will be, when it's completed, it isn't finished yet, but when it's completed, it will be in several segments. The first, which I will read today, is kind of an overture, if you will, if that is not too pretentious a term, uh, giving a, a view of all of salvation history in its essential elements, beginning, therefore, with the procession of God the Son from the mind of the Father, from all eternity. Something like the way that an idea or a word springs forth from our mind. With the great difference that this divine word, God the Son, expresses in himself perfectly the totality of all of God's beauty and goodness and truth and greatness and power. It's a perfect reflection of the Father in every respect. And it was with the Father that God the Son, the Divine Word, a person, not just an idea, it was with the Father that God the Son created the universe, time, the physical universe, and the world of the angels, and ultimately of mankind. And so this initial poem, the uh, introduction to the sequence, uh, gives kind of an overview, uh, beginning with the divine beginning of the Son from the Father, and then the creation jointly with the Father and the Holy Spirit as well, uh, of the universe and angels and men. And then the incarnation, so that the slavery that the devil had brought to man through man's stupid pride in rebelling against God, that this slavery would be undone by the blood ransom of Christ made man, spilling his own blood to atone for our sins and thus freeing us. And then, at the end of this introductory poem, the vision that Christ had as God, as well as man, of all time in one kind of grand dance in which everything, even evil, is used to serve God's purpose and the ultimate triumph of his love. The title of the opening poem is Galactic Shepherd, Time's Charioteer. And it's a song for the Savior from the beginning of his existence from all eternity without any beginning. He always was there through his incarnation and then at the end of time his eternal triumph. It begins with a quotation from the Book of Wisdom. For that wisdom, being uncompounded, hath power to do all things, so doth it reach from end to end mightily. In the beginning. Conceptual silence, whence, of intellection sheer, a comprehension sure, in some spontaneous, unfurling plenitude sublime, wherein decreed, whirls forth in dance, so bestowed necessity, so encompassed chance, the multitudinous tumult of time, 
kept stripped its pace, its shout, its chase, keyed to a marshalling rhyme. Sprung from a joy everlasting, is a response everlastingly heard. Springs ever wakeful, the emblazoning word. Swift to whose praise, in swirling thunder of choirs, swells vast with wonder, what resounding accord. Thus to hail who thwarts the fury of a pride relentless raging, lifts high in command a constraining sword. Whom vast legions of light, their plight of trust, his grace engaging, salute as recognizant Lord. Swift salient sure, plums who such measureless deep, all instantaneous whose course tenacious spans of light, what shoreless sea. Reigns Lord consortial he, as alone the begotten of an ageless might, to which light unbounded, full this his lightness bright, all ablaze in glory, forth who radiant spring. The resplendence of a radiance prime. Born to him who so knows as gainsays the gainsaying, the consentaneous Lord Marshal of time. Sire's writ affirms, wields who sire's mace, shapes who the form, the force, the pace, wherewith time's rage of abatition began. While in the song of nascent choirs, ascending swift in a swirl of gyres, love's theme magistral in sovereign descant ran. Lord jubilant reigned, of changeless light in empire sure, who promenades in glory to wealth unbounded, wealth undistrained, the enraptured air, through whose bright realm no thrift austere turns drear that story, nor terms of size, nor powers to cease, cast shadow there, past need, past care, of such dominion fair, full height sustained, in gift entire of uncompounded strength, all purpose gained, who yet stoops gently low. If inexpugnable, O oh, unchallengeable, Lord so engendered the unapproachable there, here who obeys time's sway, sleeps so, young Lord compassionate. In love's complaisance, who self-surrendered smiles, thus far deceptored, in contravening and supervenient plan, deigning here, Lord unconfounded to span, soft slumbering lamb, fierce rampant lion, reigns he our scion most sapient, in his wiles ever wakeful. Pledged blood ransom, doomed huntsman of man. In whose craft, found resourceful, Winds his way, now most sure, Through death's maze he, the master, Steadfast strong to endure, Swathed now in lowlier birth, Read their wreath writ of man's worth, such claim on pain as shall lure death undone. Evoking plenty from dearth, shapes he high heaven of earth, the estranged grown dear, from banished far, change near. Constates the kingly cunning, acknowledge wise in his ways, death's challenger bold, man's champion keen, in blessed stealth, Shown resourceful, hailed efficaciously brave, Of so almighty a father, in rapt recognizant gaze, Lord Melodist 
Avan fam kushu bobo love. Love answer season of that vigor anealed whence tongued in fire unconsumed stands revealed, stands imparted cogent measure to us. This their withinmost, their commutual breath, consurgent sigh, O voice of ecstasy serene. Bond inseverable of a concord supreme, whose yield everlasting, full dominion trine, where within each in grand severalty condign reigns exultant, such their fellowship blessed. Unfaltering true, such source assessed, make so us new that name confessed whose swerveless might, forever same, awakens rest, the wild soothed tame. Where with cleanse pure as ages run, in concert sure with the three in one, the forlorn changed welcome guest. As of old the outcast, of high state quite dispossessed, just so all lame went he, that now springs free, by love is sea, snatched aloft, swept up on high, throughout exuberant drift of sustentive flight, held solicitous fast in grasp of talons bright, of him who in fierce reply, forth eagle swift, forth from startled sky, once hurtling downward, plummeted down, 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 indeflectable down, inevasable down, to leave so at the last despoiled, that one most furious foiled, known as most all spurious failed, that in heavens as in man's despite, all affrontive bold, came coiling cold, came prince of shame, came scribe of blame, came despotic and vertiginous night, that twisting, slithering, lecherous worm, in ingravescence of malice, most inveterate firm, if in this perseverant alone, of whose wound from of old we are healed, death's title claim, hell's potent hold, repealed. Thence freed, Whence found need to rejoice, in bold deed pay we heed to such voice as shall us thus now marveling teach. No dizzying steep, no heart staggering deep, no nor aught that can be told of uncontained infinity. Shall an aught evade, shall amaze his reach, whose glance effectual from eternity's height impartial, gainst nature constraining none, pursues unbaffled his victories won, binds future, binds past, in one vast swirling dance of bliss sustained, secure displayed, held sure the yield of consortial serenity in the blaze of his justice foreseen. High Lord, encompasser of all time's boundless deep, in one swift sweep, the sounder bold of eternity's incircumscriptable sea. So that is the end of the introductory poem, kind of an overview of salvation history. A second section deals with the Big Bang, uh, with the creation of the physical universe. And God said, let there be light. Imperiously calm, most sovereign sure, such the summoning voice of creation 
marshalling more to this thunder, this accelerant blaze. O oh, fierce to hiss it, this the flowering flame storm, whose jubilant flare and sforzando exultation tongue the everlasting's glory. And so amazed, discountenance, gainst dissuasion, dispossessed, void, and his glowering cousin, black sable tyrants to this vast delve of night. Of clarigation disdainful, bold Pesedo of light, whence to resounding shout at darkness rout, sweeps forward, blazoning each scale gradient of the sky, light's host, before whom flies craven gloom to fastness evermore remote. Yet to such resolute, ruthless, relentless pursuit, soon, soon abandoned, unavailing. Such purchase sought, found failing, thence gained no hold, thus grasped no halt, gates thrusting dauntless, O oh, inexorable assault, for night sped staunchless, tailing. Fled de crescendo wailing, railing for this so astonished realm, which gerundoling starbursts, irradiant in insult, overwhelm. Whence, hopes at best precarious, fleeting swift undone, Night's host regaling, no boast prevailing, no countervailing haven won. Night's vaunted galleons their penance struck, salute an all-vanquishing Lord. Stand in awe, God's angels bright, and demons stare. The third section, which I'm still working on, would deal with the temptation of Adam in the fall, but the promise of redemption. The next section would deal with King David after his sin of adultery and murder, and yet with his repentance given the promise that from his son, born the second son to David from Bathsheba, from his son Solomon, would one day come the line that would produce the Savior, Christ our Lord. The next section, still working on, presents Mary sitting by the bedside of her cousin Elizabeth, waiting for the birth of St. John the Baptist, and Mary's thoughts as she ponders on the mystery of the child that she is bearing, and what his destiny, including pain, no doubt, would be. The next section after that, if all goes well, would be the final thoughts of Pope John Paul the Great at the time of his final sickness, and perhaps as a fellow Pole, uh, thinking about the sacrificial death of Maximilian Kolbe as well, and meditating on the status of the world today. And then the final section, which is complete, is uh, a short hymn to the newborn Christ child in the cave at Bethlehem. Maranatha. Strike deep then, Lord, into our darkness. Spring forth in blaze of war. Surprise pride sleeping castle. Fling down his startled gates. Beat back our shield arm, O champion strange, most strong by far for shattering pride in his shuddering keep. These weak clutching fistlets and that wise dreaming smile beguile the eyes that want 
wandering once after world skirling pageant, but rest in wonderment now at this prince, through whose strange stronghold's door, so dark, all quiet, quite unguarded, each now here must stoop, stoop low to enter. There in the freedom found of the soul unbound, across this silence clear, such call to hear as shall to a heart much of late distraught, caught fast in delusion, but by a love unsought, by a love past all our thought, bought free, brought swift beyond all telling, to love's swift healing sure, shall so long forgot, or in furious folly so insistent fought, shall in love fraught wonder thus most wondrous taught, so undone pride's blunder, held his plunder naught, shall the heart its song restore. All of which deign, Lord, to prosper, so now, so forevermore. Venite adoremus. And that concludes. There is one section, too, which I probably will include, uh, which is finished, which deals with the final hours in the life of a young man, a celebrity playwright, New York, who has everything the world can offer, but has rebelled against God and his confrontation with a dark judgment. I may or may not include that. But this is the, uh, the work in progress. So my thanks to Mark Eldridge and to Father Johnson. Uh, this was their gracious offer, and uh, I accept it humbly. Uh, at least this is uh, a long-standing effort that uh, is inspired by love. Whether or not it succeeds, I will leave to others to judge. Thank you very much. <laughs>